You are listening to MCC Votes and Seats, the podcast series of the Center for Political Science of Matthias Corvinus Collegium. We provide election insights with experts and politicians. Today we are going to talk about the elections that were held in Bulgaria on the 14th of November 2021 to elect both the President and the National Assembly. The parliamentary election was the third one in 2021 as no party or alliance was able to form a government after the April and July ballots. We have the pleasure to have Miss Nelly Kirilova with us today to help us analyze the results and the background of the ballots from a local perspective. Ms. Kirilova is a Bulgarian researcher specializing in international relations and security policies. She has been actively participating in election processes through the last 10 years as part of an OSCE International Observer Team, as well as a member of local electoral committees in the country and abroad. Currently, Nelly Kirilova is a PhD candidate at the Corvinus University of Budapest and a PhD fellow at the European Security and Defense College. Her PhD research explores geopolitical competition in the Black Sea region between Russia, Turkey and the EU and the incompatible concept of power as a reason for international conflicts and security crises. Ms. Nelly Kirilova holds an international master's degree in Russian, Central and East European Studies, an MA in Political Science and an MA in International Relations. Ms. Kirilova, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. So as to start, let's take a closer look at the political and social context in the country. How would you describe the atmosphere before the November elections and after the results came to light? Well, this is the third attempt to elect a parliament which is able to form a stable government. But this is not really a problem because uh, many parties during the last 32 years were giving uh, declarations in their election campaign and right after they were elected they were making exactly the opposite from their previous declaration. The specific situation before this election was that the green pass were introduced and the vaccines were uh, almost obligatory. A huge part of the population disagreed with this proposal because a lot of people already had the virus but they didn't have tests for reasons that they had to pay for this on their own and the government did not uh, support this. And this was the reason why why a new party entered the parliament because it was the only one which uh, supported this wide popular opinion. The three elections were a result of uh, ongoing more than one year protests against the previous government. The previous government was in power for 12 years and uh, the way that it organized its structure in the society were not stable anymore. The population decided to go out to protest. And uh, those elections in uh, November were expected in advance to attract more of the protest vote. But instead of attracting more people, they just uh, changed the owner of the vote. So the result was almost the same as in the previous elections. And the result was that more uh, than half of the seats in the parliament could be won by the parties of the protest. And actually, the purpose of this uh, third election was that more parties of the protest would win votes. However, the newly elected party was uh, proposing to negotiate with all the other members, except of the two um, seriously accused of status quo, not very correct towards society practices, who are GERP and DPC. Thank you very much. So you mentioned the newly formed We Continue the Change party. Uh, how would you describe the political visions of this uh, PP party? We Continue the Change is uh, claiming that it will uh, have economic success for the country and uh, financial stability as well as zero corruption. These are among the main topics with which the two leaders of the party were dealing before they established the party. They were uh, previously working as uh, ministers of finance and economy in the caretaker government, which was established or proposed by the president at this moment, Rumen Rade. So the leaders of this party were first elected as ministers and after that they acquired wide popularity. Due to this, they decided to create their own party. So what shall we know about Petkov and Vasiliev? 
Both of them are Harvard graduates, and this brings a lot of expectation for their behavior and government. But uh, Asen Vasilev was indeed studying in Harvard for the five years, while Kirill Petkov just made uh, one master's course there. However, they are expected to also have a very good contacts abroad with well-educated people who they are trying to attract back to the country. So um, their added value is that they would uh, convert the brain drain into brain gain, possibly. And uh, they are very open for communication and dialogue with the other parties, which is also necessary to have uh, a stable government in the future, not to be authoritarian, but to be democratic and to attract the best experts from all fields of the uh, social governance. However, their strongest expertise is in finance, economy and entrepreneurship for Asen Vasilev and Kirill Petkov. So they really have to find a way to attract good experts in all the other topics and to be sure that the people that they select are really experts. Boyko Borisov's GERB party that used to govern the country before the April elections remained second this time with more than 22% of the votes. Is there any future for GERB at all? It depends on how they behave in the future because due to the fact that they ruled for 12 years, they believed that the structure that they created within the country is stable and long-lasting. However, they were surprised from the vote of protest, which was uh, to some extent extent also influenced by the corona crisis. In the beginning of the corona crisis, a lot of well-educated people from abroad came back to the country. This affected their perception about the way that the country is governed and they initiated the huge protests in the country. So the party of Boyko Borisov is to some extent not giving enough value to the well-educated people from abroad and expecting that the electorate is not having very well-educated people and very smart people. Maybe in the future, if they to some extent succeed to attract more educated people, they could change because a positive side of this party is that they really have well-developed structure. How they use this structure is another uh, topic and this is the problematic aspect of their governance. The Turkish ethnic minority party, DPS, finished third place by over 13%, defeating the socialists. Do you think DPS can be a kingmaker? It is considered a party of the status quo together with GERP, and it is considered to have non-correct practices within the way of governing, which are under the table. How it will continue in the future depends on how much light is given to all the political negotiations and political processes. At the moment, the PSC earned a lot of voters from abroad especially from Turkey, because they very well mobilize their electorate. It is a party of the Turkish minority or the people in Bulgaria who speak Turkish or who are Muslim. And to some extent, it tries to attract the Roma people. It is considered that this party is very much connected to Turkey and to Erdogan. The Bulgarians who are not Turkish speaking or Muslim are less motivated, let's say, to vote than those who are part of these minorities. And this is uh, undervaluing of the position of the DPC brought this high result of the party. So whether it will be one of the rulers, this will depend on whether the light is shed on the political processes or it stays hidden as it was so far. Once Boyko Borisov described Ahmed Doan as the best politician in Bulgaria. Do you think is there any relationship between Borisov and Doan? Bulgaria is not a very big country and it's non-realistic to expect that the people who are relatively the same age and doing the same don't know each other. So, yes, of course. I presume that they know each other very well. Both parties, GERP and uh, DPC, are parties of the status quo. And this status quo was ruling the last... 12 years. It was supposed to be a democratic status quo, but it actually used some of the socialist methods because the people who were in the party, GERP, were very often part of the previous uh, political elite of the communism. Of course, they know each other and of course they were supporting each other so that they could uh, succeed to be in power so long. I understand. You mentioned while you were talking about DPS that the party had uh, close ties to Turkey and 
Turkish uh, politics. Uh, is there any other party in Bulgaria which has any foreign influence or alleged foreign influence? My research is about the balance of power between Turkey, Russia and the West. Of course, these three actors have a strong influence. Russia has strong influence through the BSP, which is the other party of the status quo, and it was the Communist Party or Socialist Party was inherited by this one. Now it's related to some extent to Russia. It was not in power for many years, but uh, actually all the political leaders who are 50 or more years old were part of this in the past. Undoubtedly, people from this branch are now leaders of also democratic Bulgaria. Christo Ivanov is the leader of one of the movements, Maya Manolva, who is the leader of Ispraviste, and Tatiana Doncheva, who is the leader of Movement 21. The three of them also come from there, and it's not surprising at all. Also, Boyko Borisov, he was uh, even not on a very high level position, but he was just a bodyguard of uh, Todor Zhivkov. There is such a people or there is such a nation. The party of Slavi Trifonov was the winner of the last election in July. And the party was seen as the election loser, this time dropping to fifth and gathering less than 10% of the vote. What role can there is such a people play in the government formation negotiations? He is not a politician. He is not uh, studying political science or anything related to this. And this was the way that he thought would be successful. He wanted to make a change and he was also ready to help people who know how to do it under the condition that their um, morality is very high. Uh, This is not very easy to find in politics. He was actually trying to attract people during the years after the referendum until creating the party. And he was interviewing experts who could be good at different topics. And actually, his program is very, very well developed. It has uh, well-organized priorities, which are achievable in four years in April, their election campaign. as a way to attract more voters who normally vote for the status quo parties. And it was a very successful way to keep the people apart from the status quo BSP, GERP and DPC. The first time when Eton uh, won the elections, it could not propose a government. Later, it won again and it proposed a government very quickly, but the experts were not uh, approved by the other parties. And now it has a better role because it could very well support the um, party of the protest from the back. I think that now it has a, a more suitable role. And then why do you think Imata Kravnarod lost popularity vis-a-vis the We Continue the Change party? Because uh, a majority of people don't think too much. They just look who is famous right now. So he was famous because of his songs and his TV show. But he used this in a very smart way and he had the experts who know what to do and he just used the fame to attract voters. Twice he could not uh, have the government because he said that there are not enough parties of the change who would support his government. And if he doesn't have enough votes in the parliament, then uh, there will be sabotage from the parties of the status quo. For this reason, he could not succeed in having a government first and second time. And now the Prodolzhavame uh, Promianato maybe we'll have a government because they invite one party from the status quo. If they don't invite a party from the status quo, they also cannot have a majority. Talking about the campaign, what were the main themes and slogans? They were different. For example, Prodolzhavame Promianata, the party of Petkov and Vasilev, was proposing uh, zero corruption. They also proposed high economic growth, which is uh, very much needed considering the fact that the economic level of the country is very low and the ability to buy goods with the salaries there is very, very low. Next, the party, there is such a people suggested that Bulgaria is a free country, but the Bulgarian citizens are not free. So it uh, really stimulates now, but uh, the years in the past four or five years stimulates the Bulgarian citizens to try to defend their rights and freedoms. The party Democratic Bulgaria was uh, claiming that Bulgaria can do a lot more. So this was the main slogan. And even before the elections, the three rounds of elections, it organized a parallel counting of votes, suggesting people to enter into the commissions. 
of the elections because it believes that maybe the corruption is at so high level that votes are manipulated. And actually, it had a lot of success with this because what they supposed was needed. After that, the party which did not enter the coalition stand up, here we come, could not enter uh, because its main uh, idea or slogan was to create anti-corruption commissions, but only against Borisov because probably they had some personal relations. It was especially targeted against Borisov. By the way, the previous party, Democratic Bulgaria, had uh, especially targeted uh, DPST, which is the Turkish uh, party. Bulgarian Socialist Party, its logo was uh, Here We Can Stand Together. And the Turkish Minority Party or Movement for Rights and Freedoms, they were having their campaign parallelly in Turkish language. So they could attract very well the people who speak Turkish better than speaking Bulgarian. Ger had the logo We Are Stronger Than the House. And they claimed that the chaos was created after the protests and it was created, according to them, by the lack of stable government. But actually, the society needs not to have a stable government, but to have a stable democracy. And lastly, the party which entered into the government now, which is Vazrajdane or Renaissance, entered with uh, some very extreme suggestions. One of them is to delete any ideas about vaccination, not to have a green certificate, and to accept that there is no pandemics at all. Another one is to annex Northern Macedonia to Bulgaria. Bulgaria, and another one is to go out of the EU and NATO. Some people voted for them just because of the Macedonian idea or just because of the green certificate and COVID idea. So in what sense, if any, was this autumn campaign and election process different from the previous ones? Did the parties use different tools or new platforms to reach the voters? They started the campaign with the visits of the cities and villages, but due to the pandemics and lockdown, they continued to have it online. So it was mostly through the social media and the national media. The national media is sometimes accused that uh, it supports the interests of one or another party, depending on who pays for the campaign. But the social media platforms, even like Facebook, were very popular. All the people had access to them, and this was the way to reach more for people not only in the country, but also abroad and from higher educational level. A lot of social media was used and it was the main way of reaching to the people. Now let's talk about the presidential election. What do you think are the main differences between the political directions represented by Rumen Radev, Anastas Gerjikov, Mustafa Karadai and let's say Lozan Panov who ran for the ballot? Roman Radek was the president so far, and he was initially proposed by BSP, the Socialist Party. He created the caretaker government twice after the elections in April and after the elections in July. Kirill Petkov and Asen Vasilev are ministers of his caretaker government who acquired wide popularity. So this means that the, this president showed that he can do something good for the people in the course of the last one year. Also, he was very much supporting the nation to be united during the protests which lasted in 2019-2020. And uh, a lot of people trusted in uh, his uh, attitude of changing the way of governing from something which is definitely not working to something which might be good or it might not be good, but at least is better than what is happening at this moment. This is one of the reasons why he earned a lot of popularity. And another reason is that he was supported by four parties. He was supported by Prodolzhavame Promianata because it's created by his ministers. He was supported by um, There is Such a People. He was supported by Stand Up, uh, Here We Come. He was supported by the Bulgarian Socialist Party because originally he was the candidate of this party. And the voters who were supporting the listed so far parties were encouraged to vote for uh, Rumen Radev. Second, Atanas Gerjikov. He is the rector of the Sofia University and his uh, profile is academic, but he was elected by GERP who lost uh, popularity during the protests and uh, during the last one year. Therefore, he is expected to be closely related to the way of governing and the structures which GERP performed during the 12 years of its governance. 
Then Lozan Panov was uh, elected by the Democratic Bulgaria. He is judge, so he was expected to work well in the legislative system. However, he stood against the party that elected him, the coalition of Democratic Bulgaria, in the last few days. So this reduced the electorate for uh, Lozan Panov, but also it reduced the votes for Democratic Bulgaria. And then Mustafa Karadaya, who is the leader of the Turkish minority party, he was strongly supported by the Turkish in Bulgaria, but also by the Bulgarians in Turkey, who have the Turkish language as their own or the Muslim religion as their own. And there was a huge election campaign in Turkey. I watched reports on the news about this that the people were called by the phone to go and vote and they received SMS a few days before the vote that they have to go and vote and some of them even didn't know very well Bulgarian language but the whole campaign was in Turkish and this helped him a lot. Incumbent President Radev gathered around 49% of the vote in the first round but he's forced into a runoff facing the university professor Gershikov on the 21st of November. Experts say that Radev has all the chances to win this runoff. What can we expect from a second term of Rumen Radev as the head of state? He's supported by a, a, a lot of parties, but also he performed well during the last four years. He's originally a military person from the aviation, so he's very disciplined. And uh, he behaves in a way that people uh, really like. What he says, he does it. For this reason, I think that it's possible that he uh, wins the elections. However, if uh, Gerjikov wins, this uh, would be a surprise for the majority, but in politics, everything is possible. Both of them are supported from all established structures. Do you think the presidential campaign was different in any ways from the parliamentary one? They went hand in hand because the, the four candidates were supported by parties. And uh, if we look from international perspective, we could say that Rumen Radev is the closest one to Russia. Atanas Gerjikov through GERP is, uh, well, GERP is uh, pro-European and also supporting the NATO membership of Bulgaria, but uh, Rumen Radev is not against uh, these two. So uh, then Lozan Panov is also the Western proposal from democratic Bulgaria, but uh, at the same time, he criticized uh, Rumen Radev and he supported GERP and DPST, which was, was a little bit uh, strange because GERP uh, had the candidate Gerjikov and DPST had the candidate Mustafa Karadaya and uh, Mustafa Karadaya is uh, supported by Turkey. To conclude our analysis, let's take a closer look at the social, geographic and demographic elements in the election process. What were the main divides in the society during the November 2021 elections in your opinion? We have different people in every society. Some people are well educated and thinking a lot what to do. Some people have a good life and don't care at all. And some people just look the wind of change. So we have a wind of change in blowing in one direction, then they run in this direction. Then we have in another direction, they run in the other direction. And uh, also the seasons. Uh, <laughs> Have make a difference because we had a spring and the summer when the people were on holidays and now when the people are at home maybe it's cold maybe it's rainy and I think these factors are also important because we have very very low activity only 40% went to vote some people don't think that anything depends on them some people are just not interested into giving their vote because they don't care and we don't have a strong critical thinking in the country we still need to develop the social Social responsibility. The country is uh, on its way, but it uh, takes time to go higher in the social responsibility. How would you describe the differences between the party preferences of older and younger generations or inhabitants of rural or urban areas, beholders of higher education diplomas or secondary education certificates and so on and so forth? It depends what information reaches to whom. In some cities, people have uh, a lot of information and they're exposed to 
the choice to select between different candidates. But in some villages or distinct parts of the country, people have less information and they just vote for what they know. For example, in the southern and the northeastern parts of the country, we have Turkish uh, minority. And of course, they can understand better what's happening in Turkish language and they vote for the candidate that they know. In the big cities, we have people who are traveling a lot and they know a lot about other countries, so they want to be connected with the EU and they vote about this. In some other parts of the country, which are not so central, we have people who listen to different styles of music. So we have a rap singer who was a candidate of uh, We Continue the Change. They have listened to his songs and they vote for him. And we have people who listen to the songs of the TV show Men's Love with the Pupuna, and they vote for um, their research people. So it really depends what information reaches to whom. Not all the people look uh, to all the programs, all the parties, all the leaders, and sometimes the people look only on the surface. The choice is not always based on the, the programs and the potential of the party to be stable in the governing of the country for the next four years. During the previous elections, there were some issues reported with regards to the votes from abroad. Do you think that the votes from abroad anyhow affected the results of the elections? What is abroad? It's a very big uh, term. Of course, the first reaction, if you ask a Bulgarian, is Turkey, because it's very close and we have a huge minority of uh, Bulgarians there. But uh, the world is very big and we have minorities everywhere. Basically, not all the people go to vote, but this is not uh, the problem of any specific party. It's a problem that maybe the people feel disconnected with the country and maybe they don't uh, really care. And if they don't care about what's happening in the country, then uh, what can we do about this? We could either try to engage them with the political process or just respect their wish to stay away and don't expect anything from them. We have one more final question to address. I would be delighted to learn your projection on whether this parliamentary election will be successful in giving a stable government to the country or not. They already started the negotiation with between four parties. We continue the change. Uh, there is such a people, Democratic Bulgaria and Bulgarian Socialists. Putting the parties of the change and those who won the protest vote with the Bulgarian Socialist Party in the same basket is a little bit surprising because after the 89, we had a change which started bringing democracy to the country. This democracy was not real democracy, but it was some different uh, projection. And now uh, we have um, a change from this attempt to have a real democracy. But in this, we invite the Socialist Party. Our original attempt 32 years ago was to change from socialism. So something there is not really right. If we look at the people, all the people would like to have a good country in which they live and all the processes to be correct. Parts of the mentality of the people are maybe not very successful for this. Sometimes people are a little bit egoistic and they try to bring the best for their own, but not to bring the best for their country. And in this case, there is no stability. Sooner or later, there will be other elections and another change. I can confirm that it's very good that these movements uh, are ongoing and that uh, the citizens of the country are trying to defend their rights, trying to understand better what is democracy, how to stand up for their needs. And uh, this process will continue in the next years, independently of whether we have a government now or whether we'll have a government after other rounds of election. To sum up, it's very good to have this process. Thank you very much. Is there anything you would like to add to our conversation? Well, I hope that uh, the mentality of the people will change in the future and they will be more reasonable when they make their choices. And there is one more thing. In the lists of candidates, both for president and for um, parliament, I would be happy to see that uh, there are candidates who really know the constitution and know the rights, the main rights and obligations of the citizens, and they fulfill them. At the moment, this is still not happening. And this is my wish, if I could have one. Nelly Kirilova, thank you very much for sharing your most appreciated thoughts and opinions about the November 2021 general elections in Bulgaria. It was a pleasure listening to your reasoning. I wish you all good luck with your future endeavors. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. Bye.